There's no polyphenols in nicotine, as far as I know, even if it's not berry that, flavored. Not that I know <laughs> of. Um, but yeah, we can go into some guidelines a little bit. Um, I guess since we, before we dive into that too much, I will briefly mention um, that, you know, people think about uh, nicotine or tobacco use as smoking, and that's certainly the highest risk of cancer. But there are studies, including studies from Europe, there's also studies from India, there's a meta-analysis, we'll put all the links in the description. But even smokeless tobacco in some large studies increases the risk of pancreatic cancer and esophageal cancer. So it's not just oral cancer that it's an increased risk for with smokeless tobacco or oral tobacco, snus, I believe it's called. Um, but there's not enough data on um, nicotine. So like vaped nicotine or the Zen pouches that everybody's using. Or a nicotine patch. Yeah, um, there's not enough data on that, but there is proposed mechanisms where even just nicotine at a high enough dose um, is going to release reactive oxygen species. Personally, I certainly wouldn't want more than, you know, probably 10 to 12 migs of nicotine over the course of a week, ideally not exposed daily as well. Uh, I think that's a higher upper limit than I would even personally try. I, I was thinking maybe six migs over a, a week time period, but that's a, that's a much better at, at that dose. I don't know if you would be able to see an effect size because there is also the concept of, you know, hormesis where yep. exercise generates some, you know, reactive oxygen species that are involved in, mm -hmm. you know, damaging DNA, but the benefits of that and things offset that just like yeah. eating, um, you know, a bowl of berries, your sugar goes up, you know, that's going to generate some reactive oxygen species, but you have a lot of antioxidants and polyphenols. Yep. There's no polyphenols in nicotine, as far as I know, even if it's not berry that, flavored. Not that I know <laughs> of. Um, yeah, it could be dessert flavored. Um, and uh, there's a lot of teenagers that are using these Zen and nicotine yeah, pouches and I, products. Uh, I recall yep. coming across these certain flavors were more or less inflammatory mm -hmm. in vitro because yep. they can set these in a dish and see what happens to the cells. I think the menthol was less. Was menthol more or less? I don't remember. It, it depended that it on the cytokine, which yeah. is really interesting. And it's all theoretical because it hasn't been translated into, you know, mice or humans, you know, the, the clinical research yet. But I think the dose makes the poison. It's a common mm -hmm. theme. Well, smokeless tobacco, it usually presents in the seventh decade of life. So, you know, someone's presumably been using it from for 50 years, from age 20s to age 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and... If the same thing is true of nicotine without the other tobacco products and certain carcinogens, the same will likely be true. So we'll know 40 or 50 years from yeah, now. Hopefully people grow out of vaping yep. by their 70s. Definitely no more than three milligrams of nicotine per day. I think I used to say two milligrams, except apparently the Zen pouches in the US are only three milligrams. Yeah, I was looking at this because I was like, what's the lowest dose thing that I can like go out and, and get or, or for people that are trying to get off of other forms of nicotine or cut their doses down? Yep. And it looks like in the UK, you can get lower dosed nicotine, the same company, I believe even. Um, but then here, it seems like the, the bottom is at three. Um, and I suppose that's because the companies know that Americans really like their nicotine. Yeah, uh, supply and demand. That's probably why. So uh, we should work on that. <laughs>